for a few moments. Just for a moment or two, I'd like to sh just reflect on what we heard, and I'd like to take a, just a step into Bible study before I get into the sermon. Obviously, now you made the connection, the reason why I chose John to read that very first reading from Proverbs, that little one verse proverb, was clearly when Jesus was telling this parable, what he was doing was tapping into the book of Proverbs that his poem people knew, and he just told a story to exemplify what was there. That's Jesus being a rabbi. That's why context is important. Okay? So what is this all about? Well, it's about three virtues that we're called to live if we're going to be Christians. It's about humility, hospitality, and charity, and context for them. If I could use the one form of life that I was never good at, although I aspired to it, and that was baseball, you know, in baseball, if you go one for three, that's a darn good career average. Very few players have ever done that. I don't think I ever did that even in a game, much less in a career. The one for three in the Christian life is not good enough. Hospitality, humility, charity, that's what we're supposed to be about. And not just in a way that we get seen doing it, but in a way that actually touches the lives of others. So I'm going to start talking, and I'm going to put this into a different context. When I've used this as an example in sermons in the past, I always said, let's imagine we have a fundraiser for the parish, okay? And let's get a whole bunch of speakers that people really, really want to hear. And in years past, probably I would have mentioned a politician or two, a statesman or two. No matter what I say now, it's going to offend someone, okay? And here's the point. I don't really care whether I offend you on that, but the point is it takes away, you focus on the example, you don't focus on the point. So we're going to eliminate all politicians from this example, okay? But think about a great fundraiser and about people coming to talk. So I, in my mind, this is my world, I imagine I'm going to have a fundraiser for the parish, I'm going to have a great speaker's forum, and at the forum, I've invited Francis of Assisi, Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, and Martin Luther King. Okay? I dare you to be offended. Go ahead. So the point is, I have this, we have, we're having this, and then I would sit back and watch as people come, and you all, obviously, we all would, would move our way as close as possible to be a part of this, because it's important. Because where you sit in the eyes of others is important. Even in the church world, it's important. When I was on the Ecumenical Commission, I haven't told this story once, this is, this is new to you, but it's true. One of the things, one of the great joys was my lesson in humility, when in the midst of the great sexuality controversy, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was actually at St. Vladimir's uh, Russian Orthodox Seminary in, um, in uh, Crestwood, getting an honorary degree. So there was this big banquet, and I was there representing the diocese. So making sure that they wanted me to know what the Orthodox Church thought of the Episcopal Church, you know where I got to see? In the janitor's closet, three floors below the banquet. That's where they kind of put me. All right, sending a message. Where you sit <coughs> tells the world how important you are in our eyes, but not in the eyes of the world. And that's what this is really about. He uses the exam example, it kind of taps from a proverb that, that, that John read. Having a great party, what's really important is not what you, well, how people think of you. What's really important is what humility is truly about, being aware of the fact that God is God, I'm not, and everything I have is a gift. And you take those three things and live them. You are living the life that the Lord calls us to live. God is God. God is great. I am not God. And everything I have really is a gift. All that I think I know, all that I think I possess, all I can achieve is really ultimately so small. Because it doesn't matter what I do with it unless I'm using it in the service of others. If it's just a gift I hold to myself, it is not achieving the purpose the Lord has given to me. And then he takes, takes us one step further. He says, you know, humility is important. And humility is not self-abuse. Immunity is not walking around saying, I'm garbage. That's not humility. But humility is in the service of others where you do what is great without being full of yourself. That's what humility is about. And Jesus makes the follow-up point. He says, look, when you do something great that's going to touch others, don't do it in such a way that you're only doing it for the recognition. And he uses the example, give a, rich, give a party, well, make sure you invite your relatives, because they're going to have to invite you back. They've got to live with you. Invite your rich neighbors, because they've got money. You know? Invite the people that really will repay you. And he uses this outstanding, stark description. He says, throw a great banquet. 
And at this feast, make sure you invite literally the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. The four groups in that culture, in that society, who not only had no rights, they had no hope at all because of the situation they were in without any kind of a social net. And what Jesus simply says is this, you want to be great in God's eyes? Then look at motivation. Look at why you do what you do. In my 44 plus years in ministry, and it was funny last night, I'm going through it, I'm watching Connie Bobble, she's so sweet, but her, she should never play cards for money, okay? Because as I'm telling the story, her face is lighting up and she's shaking her head yes and she's going no, and it's like, oh my God, you've, you've, you've met the same people I have. Um, People can be generous for all sorts of reasons that have nothing to do with the gospel. You know, people can be generous out of a sense of duty. You know, I give to God, I give to the IRS, and I give with the same enthusiasm. Okay? You're smiling. You know. We can give out of a sense of self-interest. Charity is part of the eternal investment that I have in the salvation of my soul. So, when Ron is looking at me, think about this. Think of the person who, and, and just... In theory, I'm not, I don't have anyone in particular. I'm just making this up, okay? Don't get stuck on the point. Think of the person who cheats on a spouse, beats the dog, but gives to food for the poor. It doesn't balance that way. It's about charity. It's about humility. It's about understanding what God has given us and why we do what we do. Some people are very generous because they feel so much better about themselves because they feel they're so much better than the person they're giving to. And they carry that in. I give to feel superior to you. They never say those words because they're much too polite. But that's what's going on. And what Jesus, I'm not going to have other examples, but Jesus is saying, understand why you do what you do. And the important thing is we do what we do because God has given us so much. That's why I respond to others. That's why I use the gifts I've been given in service for others. Not so that I feel better, although that very often happens, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we give to those who don't appreciate. We give to those who say what you've given is never enough. And we still are called to give. Because we do it in service, we do it in charity, we do it in humility, and we do it in love. And that's what love is really about. That's what being called to the highest place of honor is all about. It has nothing to do with where you sit and who recognizes you. It's the realization that God recognizes what we do and why we do it. And that is the true religion. Or to use the words of the collect, we ask the Lord to nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. The Lord brings forth those good works. And that's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to be. That's the definition of